So the other day I was getting in the motor home here to go chase after some salmon and the motor sounded like this. Sounds like a popcorn popper in there. Take this cover off real quick and a little better sound quality. So you got your valve cover here. That's where the sound is definitely coming from on mine. And when I put my hand on there, I can't quite get my hand fully on there. I can't reach right now with the camera and everything. But I can feel something bouncing around in there. And it sounds like a popcorn popper. I'm going to shut this off for a second. First thing I should clarify, I guess, here before I go any further is that this is a, a Triton V10 6.8. I did find some other information. And one guy had a, a, a good video, just no sound of this. On there so I thought I would supplement that and make a video of my own here and I suspect I have the same issue and it seems to be a pretty well documented issue that a lot of people have had in the past from what I understand they've redesigned this valve cover and that is there is a, a baffle in there that the adhesive fails over time and it's a plastic composite just like the valve cover is and that separates and then bounces around in there and just sounds horrific so I'm gonna pull this valve cover off and we'll see if it unveils what I'm hoping to be just that separated part and I can put a new valve cover on. But I, again, I just wanted to demonstrate that sound for some people that maybe were trying to, to find that because I could not find that anywhere. I found lots of reference to this and, and I, another guy had a, a good video on it, but he, he already had it all apart and was putting the stuff in and I just thought I would try to supplement that. And since you're here, I will show you the rest as well. Okay, so this is the driver's side valve cover of a Triton V10 6.8. Mine is a, it's a 2009 motorhome, Class C, Econoline, 2008 chassis, 2009 motorhome. So that's just how they do it. Supplied by Ford in 2008. Anyways, uh, V10, Triton V10, 6.8. And common thing, I guess, that's happening with a lot of people is the adhesive is failing on the original baffle on the valve cover, which you may have already determined to be the case for you. I'm one hand in this, sorry. And that, you know, that was just adhesived in there and failed over time, probably oil or something. And then when you're driving, you hear that sound of this thing going. And it sounds terrible, awful, horrific, terrifying. Think your motor's going to blow up, but you should be all right. I personally pulled the plug as soon as that happened and stopped driving, but had I known for sure that's what it was, I probably would have continued on my trip. But you see some scratches there and stuff, and there were little bits of pieces of plastic inside the valve, you know, the valve cover underneath this, on, you know, your uh, inner workings in there. So I did scrape all that out, you know, rubbed everything down with my fingertips and cleaned it out best I could. And hopefully if anything did work its way down in the oil pan, it's uh, going to get picked up by the filter, and I had just changed my oil. I was thinking about changing it again, but I don't think it will. Anyways, this video is simply to show you how I overcame some of the obstacles. A lot of people have had to come at it pretty hard uh, for a lot of different reasons, and this, as I mentioned, is the driver's side. A little more forgiving than taking out the passenger side. I don't think this would work on the passenger side. There's a lot more going on over there. Things are even even tighter. So what I did is, first I was able to remove the air filter assembly, and that's just four screws, one, two, three, four. This snaps in, hose clamp, get that out of your, oh, and a, a wiring harness for a sensor to plug into there. Disconnect that and lift that out. Then, I did a few other things that in hindsight I didn't need to, so I'm not going to bore you with that. But you got your wiring harnesses here, and these have like a little lever that you pull out. I can be a little stubborn, and then that comes out. And I did that with uh, the top one and the bottom one on mine because those were all part of this harness, and I could swing that up and out of the way. Also, underneath, once your air cleaner's out of the way, you have better access to this one bolt here. And... Then you gotta unclip a couple of harnesses that are uh, slid onto one of these studs. It just slides on there. You gotta, you know, kind of persuade it off one there and one on the bottom corner. These two front corners, basically, you'll see it. Take those off, and I think that was pretty much up here what I did. Then on the inside, it's a little bit of a mess. Bear with me. I was putting everything back together, and I thought I would share 
kind of a brief deal that I can. That stud that I showed you on the top and the front, well, this is the back version. You take that out, and then you can flip this whole wiring harness, this whole harness here, up and out of your way. Not flip it, I guess maneuver it up on there so it'll stay up. Then you have access to, you know, a little better access to all your, your bolts. You got, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I don't know, 12, 13 of them or so. And you can, you know, get at these. All the top ones from inside here and from the front are all pretty accessible. These ones in the middle on the bottom, you got to get pretty creative. I was using a quarter inch drive with a extension with a kind of a uh, pivoting uh, extension on there so I could angle it a little bit and squeezing my fingers in here and doing some of this. And <laughs> those are, took me longer to get those than all the others combined. Oh yeah, disconnect this also, your vent tube, you know, to, that's where that baffle is, is leading to. And that's just, it relieves pressure and, you know, as parts are moving in here and oil's moving around and getting misty and uh, there's air pressure, etc. That's what relieves that and then that allows the oil to kind of drip back down in here. That's my understanding of it anyways. I'm not an expert on that, but that's my basic understanding of it. So then you have... This is a V10, so there's five on this side. Injector, coil pack, ignition coil pack. I messed up two of these trying to get that out, and I have since replaced. I have not started this up yet. We're going to see how it works. But the front two, I was trying to maneuver this out, and it's hard because you got your you got a timing chain in the front that protrudes up pretty quick, and this is an overhead cam setup. So you got parts in there that you got to get over. You'd think you'd just unbolt all these and just, oh, I'll just pull that right out of there. And that's not the case. Wish it was. Um, so I did some maneuvering. I was able to get it up over the front coming in this way. I know uh, there's an, another guy out there that had a video, and I had communicated back and forth with him a little bit. He said he went out the front, and I just wasn't seeing that path. I mean, even if I took out the radiator, <laughs> it might have worked, but that's a lot more than I felt I needed to do. So... Uh, after damaging a couple of the connectors on ignition coil packs, and it was the front two, I tweaked the connection upward, and then it cracked, and I've replaced them, got two new ones, and I suggest strongly that you get Motorcraft or Ford, mix and matching with other brands, you know, for the good price, a, a lot of times from what I've learned from people, it can open up a can of worms, and you know, slightly different voltage calibrations or something, quality control. They don't, they don't sometimes, you can get lucky, but sometimes they don't like each other. And I didn't want to be digging in here again any sooner than I needed to be. So I, I went with uh, the Motorcraft coil pack replacement. Anyways, back to the mission here, we're getting this out. So it's hard lifting in the back because then the bottom drops down and vice versa. So I found that if I pull, grabbed it by this and then again trying to rotate it maneuver i was getting really hopeful and it did not work out as i mentioned i damaged two of those coil packs and uh, another guy said that he had to he removed his fuel rail which is this rail here which all your uh your injectors connect to and i didn't see that being an obstacle for me and i did not end up doing that and there may be other configurations where that is the solution but for me it was not if yours looks like mine you know you should be able to do this but if if you got some other stuff going on in there i you know you might have to get creative and a little more aggressive but so i took i disconnected each connector here and you just squeeze and pull um, and then i disconnected these and then i took out my ignition coil packs which is just one bolt and i suggest before doing that blowing everything off real good or vacuuming whatever you can do to prevent stuff from falling down in there because that's where your spark plug is and if you're going to change your spark plugs while you're in here too make sure you clean that all out really good so stuff doesn't fall down into your cylinder and then you got you know crud in there so i took out my five coil packs then i was able to lift this up and kind of rotate it clockwise pull it out it didn't come out smoothly there was you know, maneuvering and finessing to do to get it out of there. And once I got it back to here, that there's a little part in the front over the timing chain. And when I got it back to here, that hooked right on this, on the body part here. And if my seat was out and I considered taking it out, 
I could have just swung it this way and it would have just came right out of there. But I was able to be patient and maneuver it and it came out, out the back. And then once I had that sorted out, I really cleaned everything in there because there was little plastic chips in there, cleaned every deal. I took my phone and went in and out and made a video of each port, each each valve, every surface, till I, my heart was content with it being clean to my satisfaction. And then I maneuvered this one back in and I looked high and low for torque spe specs on these bolts and came up with about, I think it was 70 to 100 inch pounds or like six to whatever that is in foot pounds, you know, inch pounds times 12 or divided by 12 is foot pounds. Um, so then I found out these are kind of shoulder bolts. They kind of, when they make, when they're where they need to be, it makes contact with the head surface. There's a washer on the back on mine. You might get some aftermarket stuff. I don't know. This is actually from a Ford dealership, this valve cover. And you felt it hit up against there and it seated nicely. And then I just gave it a little snugging on each one in kind of a pattern, starting with the, you know, top, middle, bottom, middle, top, other, middle, <laughs> bottom, other, middle, and working my way out. That's kind of a common pattern, it seems to be. And don't over tighten it. Don't strip out these because. You know, make sure, see if you can find better information on that. But I felt comfortable with, you know, my touch. All right. So once that is in, voila, you know, there was a, some zip ties on here that loosened this up a bit. So now I'm just putting it back together. I'm, I put in two new coil packs to replace the bad ones. Putting the bolt back on here, the bolt on the front. Put my air cleaner back on. Put those wiring harnesses back on. And then I'm going to give it a test. And, uh... Anyways, it, it seemed to be a hard thing to find when I was really looking. I'm like, there's got to be an easier way. And I know one guy, other videos were, were really good, but a lot of them were on the other side of the motor. And it's really, really tight over there. I, I don't want to have to do that one if I can avoid it. And there's a lot more going on. I don't know how well I'm representing that, but there's a lot more going on over there. So I did buy that valve cover. Just like uh, when a headlight goes out, the next, the other one goes out a week later. So, I, and I didn't know what this was going to entail. I mean, I was I was contemplating dropping a motor mount and lowering it on a jack to get a little more clearance if I could. Somebody had suggested lifting the cab, but this is a a cab over bed, um, you know, Class C motorhome. So, eh, didn't really want to explore that if I could avoid it, and I'm glad I didn't have to. So, anyways, like I said, there there wasn't a lot especially on the driver side it seemed to be the more forgiving and i just thought i would share some of the complications i ran into and th that was all there was to it for me i hope it's as simple as that for you and i hope this is helpful and you know i had that popcorn sound to that plastic that i demonstrated in the video and i put my hand right here and i could feel it like tapping on the plastic rhythmically with the with the uh you know revving of the engine and i was so I was not excited about the repair job, but I was certainly excited that that's all it was <laughs> instead of something much more fatal to to the uh, motorhome. So anyways, I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, I know I rambled a lot of stuff at you really quick. But if you have any clarification needs or whatever, just ask a question in the comment. I'm happy to reply. But I'm going to finish putting this thing back together. Give it a test. Hope, you, hope it helps.